guys! Today I'm reviewing Escape from the Planet of the Apes. This is Dr. Zero, her loving husband Cornelius, and little Milo. The most dangerous to man is little Milo. Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Escape from the Planet of the Apes came out in 1971 and is the third of the original series of films. They made five altogether. Roddy McDowell returns. He was missing from beneath the planet of the apes, but he returns for this one, as does Kim Hunter, who is in the first three films. It's directed by Don Taylor, and he's the same director who did Damien Oman too. Don Taylor was attracted to doing the film because of the humour and the focus on the chimpanzee couple. The screenplay was by Paul Dean and involves time travel going back in time to Earth. The original screenplay was going to be called Secret of the Planet of the Apes. The music was by Jerry Goldsmith. The film runs 98 minutes. The film had a low budget compared to the earlier films, with just 2 million. Because of the low budget, they used fewer actors in ape makeup and rushed the film into just 6 weeks. However, the film made 12.3 million back and was classed as a success, with some critics saying it's the best of the sequels. Actor Ricardo Montalban pops up and he'll have a bigger part in the next film, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes from 1972, a year later. The film stars Roddy McDowell, Kim Hunter, Bradford Dillman, Eric Braden and Ricardo Montalban. Hey, Phil! That's that bugger in the Star Trek films. He plays bloody Khan. Yes, Bones, he was. He did play a Khan. Khan! So this is the third film in the series of five. And in this one, it involves time travel. Cornelius, played by Roddy McDowell. Zira, played by Kim Hunter. And another chimp called Dr. Milo travel back in time to Earth in 1973 using Taylor's spaceship from the first film. So they use his spaceship to go back in time because the planet blew up at the end of the last film. So it's brilliant how they managed to continue the storyline. Because fans would have thought, how could you continue the, the story after the Earth blew up at the end of the last film? But they managed to do it with this very clever screenplay. So it's a very inventive way to continue the series by going back in time. So it's like a, a time loop. And it's a bit of a time paradox because they're causing events that are going to happen in later films. With the apes taken over, that's because they came back in time. So the three apes, the three chimpanzees go back in time and there's three of them. But one of them gets killed off by this gorilla in a cage. So the story is mostly about Cornelius and Zaira, and about how they managed to cope with Earth. I love the very first shot of this film, an establishing shot, where you see the beach and the crashing waves that are similar to the earlier two films. Then suddenly you see this helicopter that flies by, and it establishes that it's on Earth, modern Earth. The film's set in 1973. So the audience realises straight away the, the kind of the setting of the film. Jerry Goldsmith does the score and it's a very unusual score that he does. It's very funky, very 70s. It catches the spirit of the film in a good way because this film's much more humorous than the dark first two films in the series. It's a very much lighter film. However, the final act's quite dark. Then these troops come and they find the spaceship and these three astronauts get out the spaceship when they remove the helmets, the three chimpanzees. So it's a really funny scene. What I like most about these series of films is the continuity. There's loads of strong continuity with all five of the films. This film has flashbacks to earlier films when Zaira's under hypnosis. She's telling them what happened in the in their future that happens in the first two films about apes taking over the film starts off really well where the three apes they're in a prison and they decide not to talk to the humans because they don't want the humans to know that they can talk but when they're giving them bananas Zira can't help herself and says she hates bananas that's the first time they hear her talk 
Well, why doesn't she take it? Because I loathe bananas. Zero. I don't believe it. Yes. The hell doesn't like bloody bananas. I like bloody bananas. Oh, yes, I like bananas. <laughs> and there's some really witty lines in this film. I, I, I like the bit where Cornelius is going on saying he can talk when he can get a word here. Does the other one talk? Only when she lets me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's bloody women for you. You never get a bloody word in for them. Yes, Bones, but the reason why they won't let you talk is because you're always bloody talking dirty to them. There's some funny um, visual humour where they go shopping. Cornelius buys a suit and Zara this dress. However, the film does turn serious towards the end of the film. A turning point's when Zara finds out she's pregnant and the government don't want her to have the child because they're trying to stop the timeline. They don't want apes to take over. They think that if they destroy the child, then it'll change the, the course of history. Zayra and Cornelius escape, and the shady government are trying to find the child to kill it. And the similarities to, actually, the, the Bible. The Pharaoh trying to destroy the Christ. And there's lots of biblical references, with the newborn representing Christ. So, uh, real, really clever screen, clear. Alter what you believe to be the course of the future by slaughtering two innocents, or rather three, now that one of them is pregnant. Herod tried that, and Christ survived. Sir President Herod lacked our facilities. He also became very unpopular, historically unpopular. Rick Prieden plays Hesseline, and he's kind of like the main villain who's trying to find the child. And he's a really nasty piece of work. And you actually think he's killed the child by shooting it. But the film ends where you hear this chimpanzee talking, saying, Mama, Mama. Mama, 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 Mama. And that's similar to a scene in the first film when Taylor finds this doll, a human doll that says, Mama, Mama. <coughs> so it has a really downbeat ending. I actually prefer it when this film does turn serious and downbeat because the humour sometimes it's a little bit too much a little bit too silly at times even even though it is witty and it has a lot to follow on from the two earlier films that were absolute classics I rated both of those films 10 out of 10 so it had a lot to live up to and it doesn't deliver compared to the first two films however I do find it a good film Roddy McDowell and Kim Hunter are, are excellent, even though they've got all this makeup on the faces, that they, they still give a great performance. So although it's not a patch off the first two films, I think out of ten, I'd give this one a good eight. Eight out of ten. But did you think Bones did you like it? Ah, it's good, but it's not as good as the first two bloody films. It was soft as bloody shit at times, this bugger. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey, Phil. Give that bloody monkey some of your bloody banana to shut the door. <laughs>